So welcome everyone. I'm Graeme Stanley, the British Council's English Programmes Lead for the Americas. And in today's event, we're going to take a look at one of the most successful English language programmes that we have in the region, Sabal in English, and try to better understand what makes it successful. I'm going to start by giving a short presentation of an evaluation we commissioned to celebrate 10 plus years of working with Sabal, and that will be followed by a discussion featuring two special guests, Gabriela Kaplan from Sabal in Uruguay and Ana Rosales in Argentina, the British Council's Sabal in English program lead. So let's get started. So that was a short video introduction to the program. And if you'd like to know more about um, all of this, then you can download the report from the British Council of America's website. And we'll be sharing that QR code again and the link to the web page at the end of this presentation. So Sabal in English was first started because of a shortage of English teachers in Uruguayan primary schools. This challenge uh is faced by educational systems in many countries in the Americas and other regions of the world. And the problem has now largely been solved in Uruguay, with 96% of upper primary school students receiving English. There are face-to-face -face classes in these Uruguayan primary schools, but 64% of all English lessons are still conducted through this Sabalan English remote teaching program. And overall, Sabalan English has reached a total of around 280,000 students since 2012. The goal is to support primary students on their path to learning English, with a general aim of all students to approach a level of A1 plus or A2 of English. And this is according to the European Frame of Reference, the CFR. The results of the National English Adaptive Test in Uruguay, carried out in 2022, show that a significant percentage of grade six students, the year before they moved to secondary education, are indeed now achieving an A1 plus level or higher. This program is not just about the results, though. In the recent evaluation of the project, one of the remote teachers interviewed summarised it in this way. It's such a rewarding, heartwarming experience to get to see how much children can learn and progress at all levels, academically, emotionally, socially and personally. And you can read more comments from teachers and others in the report, which I'll share at the end of the presentation. One of the innovations of this project is collaborative expertise. That is the expertise that is employed to facilitate the learning. And this takes the form of remote teachers of English based in Uruguay, Argentina, and elsewhere, usually working in the private sector, collaborating with the local Uruguayan public sector primary classroom teachers. And the remote teachers, often abbreviated to RTs, are the experts when it comes to teaching the language, and the classroom teachers, also referred to as CTs, are the ones that better know the students and the local context. And apart from managing the classroom, the CTs also learn English along with the kids. 
and also conduct two follow-up lessons after a remote lesson, practicing the language with the students. And when they were surveyed for the recent evaluation, 71% of the classroom teachers said that they had improved their language ability. Along with language proficiency, some of these teachers are also changing the way they teach, adopting some of the methodology they see in action during the remote classes. And what do the classroom teachers think of their remote teachers? Well, 94% of the CTs surveyed declared that they were very happy with their RTs. When asked to elaborate, some of the CTs provided some interesting comments, such as these. We care a lot about the relationship between the CT and RT, which we think is at the core of the programme, says one CT. It doesn't matter if the RTs are experts or if they're super wow delivering a lesson. If we can understand each other, work collaboratively and find the best strategies for the students, said another. As you can see from these comments, the classroom teachers in Uruguay care very deeply about the opportunity to learn English that this program offers their students, and they appreciate the relationship they develop with the remote English teachers to help them do that. When it comes to the remote teachers, 90% of them are positive that the program is having a significant impact on learning in the country. One RT said the following about this way of teaching. The remote teacher should be able to become a presence in the classroom. That has to do with knowing how to use the technology, making students believe I'm looking at them when in reality I have to look at the camera and not the students, knowing their names, using the zoom and panning so the students can see I'm paying attention and looking and listening to them. 86% of the British Council remote teachers surveyed said that they were satisfied with their job. And the main reasons they gave for that were the support they received, having a pleasant working environment, access to personal and professional development, and most importantly, the satisfaction they felt from teaching the children. One remote teacher said, I feel it was one of my best experiences ever. I was trained and guided by great professionals. It was a unique and rewarding learning experience. When teachers, both remote teachers and classroom teachers, were asked what the strengths of the program were, this is what was highlighted. It's an inclusive program which features intercultural elements with great methodology. It's innovative. And another strength is the teamwork. This collaborative expertise between the classroom teacher and remote teacher gets highlighted again and again. Teachers and the general public in Uruguay were asked what the strengths of the program were during the evaluation that we undertook last year, with several surveys collecting their answers. And these were what was highlighted during those surveys. Now, the remote teachers valued the fact that Sabal and Ingles is inclusive, innovative, and intercultural. The classroom teachers also valued that it was inclusive, but mentioned the strengths, the methodology, and the teamwork. And the general public was also surveyed, and they too had inclusive as the number one response when asked about the strengths. Innovation came high in their answers too, as did the fact that Sabal and Ingles allows for English to be learned at a much younger age than otherwise would be possible for a lot of students. To summarise, we're very proud at the British Council to have been working closely with Sabal for over 10 years on a very successful education reform programme, using video conferencing to solve the lack of English teachers in primary schools in the country. And after these 10 plus years of work together, we commissioned this U uh, the UK consultants Transform ELT to evaluate the success of this programme. And the consultants rated the programme using 20 principles of good practice for large-scale English reform programmes globally. These principles take into account research literature, experience of other education change projects and programmes, and wider social reform. How did the project do? How did we do? Well, I'm happy to say 
the consultants awarded the program five stars for 15 out of 20 of their principles, including the aims and scope of the program, the local contexts, realities, and baselines being understood and taken into account, improvement objectives being realistic and practical, issues of inclusion and differences within the target audience being addressed, a clear and strong program leadership that has been established and sustained, strong project management systems established to drive and monitor progress and address changes, and all elements of the system that lead to learning being considered. As well as these principles, the evaluators report as as important that measurement of assessment and learning outcomes are consistent and regular on the program. Commercial interests of suppliers and partners is not allowed to drive the program, and the program is externally communi communicated appropriately. Let me finish with a very short overview video. In many parts of the world, there aren't enough English teachers in schools to meet the demand. During the last 10 years in Uruguay, we've tackled this issue, working collaboratively through Sabal and Inglés. To provide English lessons to students in state primary schools through video conferencing. To overcome Uruguay's shortage of English teachers, it has taken a long-term dedication to educational reform, an approach that has impacted over 280,000 students. The collaboration involves remote expertise teaming up with local classroom teachers, involving the private and public sectors, ensuring broad access to the English language. Download the British Council's Sabal en Inglés report, and imagine the possibilities of replicating this type of success elsewhere. So now, everybody, we're going to see a video of testimonials from um, people involved in the project. Seibal en Inglés es un programa que lo que busca es una democratización del idioma, de la enseñanza del inglés, que todos puedan acceder al aprendizaje del inglés para tener nuevas puertas abiertas. La coordinación con el maestro de aula es fundamental. Yo creo que es uno de los pilares del programa. Eh, sin esa coordinación sería imposible conocer más sobre los chicos. Y el docente te comenta, bueno, hoy tenemos paseo, tuvimos esto, hicimos aquello. Ellos te, te empiezan a percibir cómo que, que estás ahí. Y es muy lindo cuando eso sucede. También vemos muy presente a la mentora de inglés que va, visita nuestra institución, se interesa, conoce las problemáticas. Entonces, la coordinación en general con todo el equipo ha sido excelente. Lo interactivo de la videoconferencia es lo que da esa posibilidad de, de una eficiencia real que ha logrado compensar la ausencia de recursos humanos y a la misma vez le da el plus extra de la motivación. La alegría de entrar a una clase remota es siempre la misma. Eh, siempre se entra con la misma disposición, las mismas ganas de conocer eh, y de aprender y de enseñar también. Es muy lindo cuando vos presentás algo en la clase A y después los alumnos este, lo, lo ponen en práctica entre ellos y cuando alguno no, lo, no le sale o eh, se olvidó, este, tienen los otros ayudar. A veces vos ni siquiera estás participando y sos solo el observador y ves como esa dinámica entre ellos. El hecho de poder eh, incorporar a través de juegos y canciones y a través de la plataforma Little Bridge, que van con competencias eh, de poder ganar monedas y demás, eh, a incorporar nuevo vocabulario y seguir reforzándolas. Creo que cuando uno le pone ganas y cariño a lo que hace y realmente intenta conectar con el otro, aunque sea a través de la pantalla, eh, realmente interesarse por lo que a los chicos les gusta, eh, sus intereses y demás, porque eso lo utilizamos nosotros a, a la hora de nuestras clases, de hacerlas más interactivas, más interesantes para ellos. Creo que eso se nota y, y se genera eh, mucho cariño. La oportunidad de intercambio y de poder mostrar como tanto como ellos están aprendiendo inglés, yo estoy aprendiendo español y que ellos me pueden enseñar también, que no es solamente que yo soy la referente, el referente y que yo sé todo que estamos aprendiendo juntos y yo creo que eso es algo lindo que también puedo ofrecer. Se vale en inglés, está en constante cambio y mejorando todo el tiempo y buscando nuevas estrategias pedagógicas para llegar a más chiquilines y de la mejor forma posible.
La experiencia que los chicos tienen por su en inglés en general es muy positiva. Uno pone en la agenda que vamos a tener en inglés y se quedan entusiasmados, alegres, contentos, esperan ese momento. Ayuda también a conectar al estudiante con el resto del mundo. And that brings us to the end of my presentation. And now let's move on to the discussion, the questions and answers with our special guests. So first we have Gabriela Kaplan of Sabal from Uruguay, who has been with the program since the very beginning. Gabriela is the head of Sabal in Inglés, and she's worked since 2012 to coordinate different aspects of the program. Gabriela has a master's in humanities from California State University and has degrees in psychology from the Universidad de la República in Uruguay and in English language and culture from the University of London. Gabrielle was a teacher at the University of Montevideo and has a lot of experience as a teacher educator. Hello, Gabriela. She is accompanied by Ana Rosales. Now, Ana is program lead for the Sabal Project at the British Council's Remote Teaching Centre in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Ana is a psychologist and developed her professional experience mainly in formal and non-formal education. Before joining the British Council, she worked in the design and management of socio-educational teacher training projects for public education, leading interdisciplinary teams in non-state organisations in Argentina and Uruguay networking with national and subnational governments through collaborative projects and technical assistance and consulting. And hello, Anna. And the first question I have for you both, um, please feel free to answer um, in whichever order you like, is following. So Sibal in Inglés is a great example of a long-term education reform program that has largely solved the challenge it set out to tackle, namely the shortage of English teachers in Uruguay. So what do you think is the key to the success of the program? Hello, Graham. Thank you so much Hi, for Gabriela. this invitation. I'm very, very happy to be here representing Seival in English. Mm. To answer your question, um, I would say that, um, first of all, I would say uh, that it's that we made sure that we knew the population of Uruguay. So we started by run, we started by running a research uh, study in which we wanted to investigate if there was an interest in the Uruguayan population for their students to learn English. And that uh, showed that, yes, that for Uruguayans, learning English is very important. And so we decided, okay, then let's launch um, this very innovative uh, program. And, um, and so that was the first thing that we did. And then something else that we did was uh, we made sure that we really knew um, The cap capabilities of the classroom teachers, um, it's important to note that in Uruguay, all teachers who work in the primary sector, they have all graduated, they've all done their four-year um, graduation course uh, to become teachers. And so that gives them um, this solid um, background from where to build on. And I think that another key for the success of the program is that um, we found the right partners. Uh, I think this is very important for any um, government that wants to pursue um, this road to make sure that they really find a partner that is prestigious and uh, they're, they're experts in the field, that they have vast experience in working internationally. Um, because I think that this um, really matters, at least before starting, then we can discuss other things, um, which are also, I think are also very important for success, like supporting teachers, both remote teachers and classroom teachers. Thank you, Gabriela. Anna, do you have anything to add to that? Thanks uh, for the invitation. I'm really flattered to represent British Council's team, a large team that has been involved in uh, working with Seibal during these 10 years. 
and with Gabriela's uh, leadership. Uh, so I'm really happy to to have uh, this role today uh, with this really interesting report uh, by hand now. So um, just agree maybe on the second uh, key Seival men uh, sorry, Gabriela mentioned about the collaboration with partners and uh, not just finding the right partners that that's really interesting uh, to hear from from her side, from our side, from from British Council side. It's really interesting to be involved and to um, identify this key aspect of, of this program to be open to work collaboratively with different stakeholders and actors within a really complex network of teams and organizations and entities involved in a, a complex solution for complex problems, right? So it's really hard to solve the, the aim uh, or to, to face the aim that the program has settled from its very beginning the lack of English teachers or the aim to get to all primary students uh, in a national range, uh, reach. And uh, it's really important to have this openness and a clear sight that partnerships and collaboration is the key. And I'm not just talking about uh, the role of the British Council in this uh, story of 10 years or other institutes that have been involved uh, also since very early in the program, but also within the government uh, entities or sectors in Uruguay, the collaboration between the remote teachers and the, and the classroom teachers. It's different levels that involve partnerships and collaborations to reach this uh, complex solution and, and, and uh, results uh, and high standards to, to set and get to these high standards that the program uh, defines for, for itself. So it's really uh, important to get this engagement from all the uh, all the teams and, and institutions involved. And that's a great challenge and a great achievement uh, as well. Thank you, Anna. Um, the second question I have for you both is uh, the following. So the use of video conferencing technology to beam in remote teachers to classrooms across the country is often held up as being the great innovation of Sabal in English, especially as it's been carried out now for over 10 years. But we all know that this is only just one of many innovations in the program. And the report we commissioned highlights some of these uh, other innovations as well. So apart from the technology, the remote teaching through video conferencing, which other aspects of the program do you both think are the most innovative? I believe, Graham, um, that like you, I agree with you that uh, the use of video conference, video conferencing was what captured people's um, people's eyes firstly. You know that the use of technology, the silver screen in the classroom, mm -hmm. that was really what at the beginning people thought this is the big change. And it's true that it's technology that has allowed. Um, far deeper innovations. And I believe that uh, what the program has done is that it's changed um, the role of the teacher in the classroom. I'm talking about the classroom teacher in particular. Then, of course, there are changes for the remote teacher as well. But I believe that the greatest innovation is in classroom teachers perceiving themselves not just as people who transmit knowledge that they already possess, but as educators that can facilitate the creation of knowledge, absolutely with the help of the remote teacher, who is the teacher of English in the classroom, with also the support of the students, as Anna was saying, everyone working in collaboration inside the classroom, so that knowledge is created. And um, I think that this is the greatest innovation um, in fact, it's an innovation that actually allows for any subject to be taught at schools. Um, in fact, Seival launched a couple of years ago um, computational, computational thinking lessons in the same format. And really, anything can be taught at schools if the classroom teachers accept this new role. This is why one of the keys for the success of the program is providing 
as much support as possible because the teacher identity is changed in this program and one has to be very careful to protect and to help and to support teachers whilst um, they are going through that process. Thank you, Gabriella. Um, Anna, how about you? How do you feel about this? Well, that's, there's no doubt about Seibal being innovative. There's a lot of uh, evidence and uh, the pandemic, not just in the, during the pandemic, but during the whole 16 years of Seibal, uh, it's a, there's a big acknowledgement around large scale policy reaching uh, national reach with laptops or, or devices, not just for students, but for teachers, homes, so at schools connectivity, that part of the technology is really, really well known and, and clearly inside, outside. But it's not just that. Uh, we can see that it at the report, the CTs, for example, the classroom teachers, bringing them uh, to the center, as, as Gabriela mentioned, they um, praise not just uh, being innovative, uh, this project, but also inclusive. And also they highlight methodology and teamwork uh, when they speak about what they find uh, what are the aspects and, and strengths of this program. So it's really interesting how technology sets a base and a feasibility conditions to reach all these schools across Uruguay. But there are a lot of components, mainly pedagogic components that are in the center of the design and the implementation of the program that really make the difference when it comes to quality in teaching and learning and inclusion. And having thought about this program together with technology, but together with teacher training with curriculum design special projects teacher development for remote teachers and strong communication between uh, schools and institutes the support the schools get from the uh, territorial uh, team Seibal offers in every location uh, together with technical support so th these are really important aspects that make the difference and are also with technology uh, making a big impact within Seval in English. I would like to add, if I may, that something which is also very innovative, at least for Uruguay, and I think that for Latin America as well, is the fact that we have managed to fuse together, I mean, Anna has mentioned this, the public sector with the private sector. Seval in English has managed to bring to the public sector teachers that would traditionally work in the private sector. They had no connection with the public sector. And, um, and, I felt, and I think that this has been very beneficial for everyone. Uh, we, have all, we have all learned from each other. And I think that this aspect of methodology that the classroom teachers seem to, to, to praise so much and to value so much, I think it's highly related to probably no doubt the methodology of EFL, but it's the methodology of EFL as it is implemented, especially in the private sector. And I think that this is also fundamental. Thanks, Gabriella. I was actually going to mention that. Um, so I'm glad you, you did. Uh, uh, that means I don't have to. Just, I think it's amazing just to see how many innovations there are on the program. I mean, you could, we could also mention the innovative materials, which uh, Little Bridge have um, have provided for the the program now. Which uh, there's a lot of gamification there. Some of the special projects as well that are really motivating the students. But uh, I don't think we have time to go into details of all things. So perhaps we'll leave that for people to investigate in the report. Um, so the next question is. Um, this is a program, Sabal Ingles, that has continued for over 10 years now. How do you think, uh, sorry, what do you think um, it has, how do you think, sorry, it has benefited from having that amount of time to develop? Um, 
Well, <laughs> I think 10 years allows a program uh, to mature. And, um, and, and this is what's happened to Say Well in English. I think the first three years, and Graham, um, we were together in those years, so you know this very well. We were just trying to see whether the design, you know, the, the design which is this um, three times a week in which the kids learn English, the first lesson or lesson A is taught by the remote teacher, and then the revision, the lessons B and C um, led by the classroom teacher. We needed to know if this worked, if people uh, learned um, and um, and so, for example, we started with lesson plans that were lesson plans for face-to-face -face teaching because that's what we knew in those days. So, um, so the first three, four years were more for um, including more and more schools, giving access to more and more students, and at the same time, well, being really attentive to what was happening in the classrooms, in the schools, trying to really have an idea where the kids were learning or not, how the classroom teachers were feeling, how the remote teachers were feeling, how we were seeing the whole thing, etc. I would say that after the fourth year, when we finally realized that the lesson plans had to be more for this kind of teaching than from the traditional kind of teaching, that then we tried to find a platform. When we started, there were no platforms for learning English. Now, for so many people now, it's probably unthinkable. How come we lived in a world with no platforms? But they, we did live in a world with no platforms. And so, sure, when we realized all of this, then we went out for international tenders and we finally found Little Bridge, uh, people you mentioned. But it took us three international tenders to find a platform that we thought would suit the requirements of such a particular um, program. So all of this needs many years, but, um, and I'm mentioning several obstacles that we found um, on our way, but I would also like to mention uh, something very important in the Eastern years, which is the award that we received through you guys, yeah, which is um, the, the the British Expertise Award for Social Impact that uh, we received in the year 2020. And I would like to mention this because, of course, we knew that we were making social impact. It's not that the award told us. We knew that we were making the social impact. But to receive an award is very encouraging. Just as it was very encouraging that Seyval decided to use the same design for teaching computational thinking. So I think it's over the years that obviously you encounter so many of obstacles, but you also find solutions and very happy surprises that, you know, push you to move forward. Thank you, Gabriella. Anna, would you like to add anything uh, to what Gabriella had to say? Yeah, uh, I think it's really clear uh, these 10 years have brought many learnings and through these obstacles, Gabriela was uh, also describing, uh, it has been a really strong and, and, and solid uh, way to, to construct, to build a, a really large program. And as a partner, in, through British Council's collaboration, we can also speak about our role and how it has been changing through these 10 years. And that's been also interesting, not just because it also helped to fulfill strategic aims that also British Council had and has with this partnership, but mainly because it gave the opportunity for the program to mature in this uh, way of working together and finding and exploring new uh, aspects of policy design and implementation to be involved in. Like, for example, British Council was started as the main uh, supplier and, and is still the main supplier for classes, but has been involved in different aspects of the, the, the growth of the program, right? So developing the evaluation, developing quality management, teacher development. More recently, we also explored how to develop the child protection uh, 
way and 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 a policy for all as we do for all our projects, also for say well in English. So actually, it's uh, really interesting how to see through these ten years how also these partnerships and 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 story involves not just learnings for Seibal, but also an interesting impact for the stakeholders and partners involved. Yeah, and also I think it's important that it's allowed us, this lapse of time has allowed us to reach out other populations because we started <clears throat> by, by um, going or, or addressing students in urban schools because that's what the technology allowed us to do. With time, we've managed to reach rural areas and very importantly, I think, We've, we've had time now to also cater for special education needs. So time allows um, for everything to, to tune up and be ready for, for different um, students. Thank you, Gabriella. Thank you, Anna. And I think it's clear that um, if you want to have a successful educational reform program you need to give it time as you say to mature to develop and be able to address all of the other things rather than just the central issue that you're trying to uh, deal with which in the case of Sabal Inglés was the shortage of teachers of English. Um, now thinking more generally um, I'd like to ask you both what advice you'd give um, in addition to what you've already talked about, of course, to policymakers who would like to develop solutions to education challenges in their countries, be it a shortage of teachers or something else, what kind of advice would you give to them? I would go back to what you asked in the first question, which are the key elements of success. As I've said, know your population, know your teachers, Find a good partner. Beware of so there's so much um, commercial offer out there that are related to EFL. Be super careful um, of what you do, what you buy. Make sure once you begin implementation to listen very carefully to what happens in the field. Um, be patient, be bold, but be confident as well, because if you do things well, you will get um, to a very good outcome, I think. Excellent. Thank you, Gabriela. How about you, Anna? Well, also, coming back to the first questions, maybe I wanted to highlight here, maybe for other experiences to learn from Seval, how to dare uh, I mean, to, to encourage uh, policymakers and managers to include quality management within the implementation and the design of, of this kind of large scale programs involving uh, partners. We have been uh, involved in the design of the quality management uh, methodology for Say Valen Inglés. And now we are assessed as uh, providers by a quality assurance team uh, from Seival. And it's really, really a big uh, aspect of the program it has been challenging, of course, to, to learn how to observe teachers, to, of course, taking in consideration good practices within ELT, but also specific aspects of remote teaching in order to not leaving any students out uh, of the of the screen but also out of the learnings so it's really a, a big part of the uh, time dedicated to the to the uh, job the Seval team does working with uh, the institutes and with the British Council is to assess uh, what the, how the teaching is being de delivered and uh, teacher development as well. And it's really interesting to see in detail this whole process uh, steps like observation, institute assessment, the um, measures that they take. It's really a uh, strong aspect of the program. And I think not a usual one within educational policies. This is, of course, linked to the private sector being involved in the in this in this program. It would be really 
it is really hard to think about this kind of quality management working within a fully a public run programs or policies. But I think there is a big key to achieve the results this program has been able to get during these 10 years. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you very much, Gabriella. Um, I would like to finish by asking you if there's anything else that you'd like to say about the program that we you haven't had the chance to talk about so far. Yeah, there's one thing I would like to add, and it's that if um, somebody looks at our curriculum, they might think that um, there is no project-based learning, you know, no gamification, uh, because obviously we have to be very traditional in the form um, in which we teach English in this um, format. But we've managed to add the project-based learning, for example, or the gamification by adding special projects um, to the program. So there is this thing that a classroom teacher and a remote teacher may feel that this group is okay with just the curriculum for whatever reasons they have to make that decision. But they might also believe that the students might benefit by working on a special project. And so we've developed these and, um, and they have been developed along the 10 years, taking into consideration the language points that have to be taught in the curriculum. So, for example, we have the Shakespeare project or we have Minecraft project or we have uh, transmedia projects and everything is done so that whatever vocabulary needs to be covered or whatever structures need to be covered, they are covered within these special projects. And we've noticed that this helps classroom teachers a great deal because they can add to whatever they are teaching in English other aspects of the Uruguayan curriculum of public education. Um, and I think that this is very important because this means that we, we've managed to um, make everyone um, live in a more virtuous uh, educational cycle in which uh, you could just do, you know, more structural kind of uh, curriculum or you could add um, these other methodologies um, which have shown, for example, last year we had 15,000 students working in special projects. And we hope, you know, to double this figure this year. And we keep working on this because we all believe that uh, project-based work is, is far more rewarding and there's a lot more that you learn. So, you know, we, we have done all of this because 10 years have gone by. And of course, uh, I would like to mention very briefly the adaptive test because, uh, you know, testing, whether we like it or not, is part of the pedagogy of any program and it has to be taken into account. Yes, definitely. And that's so important, isn't it? Being able to monitor and evaluate progress, the testing that has been done and, and the other monitoring and evaluation that, uh, you do on the project as well is really important. Anna, how about you? Is there anything we else that we haven't talked about that you'd like to mention? Maybe I would like to take one of the quotes within the, the report from a former British Council uh, Seibal project manager, not, not myself, <laughs> but uh, I found it uh, really clear when said that uh, Seibal works like a Formula One car where they change the wheels with the car in motion. And uh, I think that's a really a remarkable aspect of this, the, the identity and the culture, not within, within Seibal and of course, uh, also, say well in English, uh, that's really important to be agile, to be flexible within time. This is really uh, the key to survive uh, and uh, to learn in that uh, same way. Uh, it's really a challenge, but it's possible. And say well in English has shown um, us as, as partners uh, how to do this and uh, many other possible uh, 
governments, universities, organizations that may be interested in, in, in replicating and repeating some of some aspect of this experience, I would say it's really important not to be afraid of, of do things and, and also making changes during the along the way. Because there's a lot to learn there and there's the key also to solve these complex problems that uh, we want to face together. So I'm really uh, glad to say we're not afraid either uh, to pull the rug from under our feet uh, with Seival, uh, as we have been uh, in this 10 years past and for many, many more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. I think that I, I've i definitely learned a lot uh, from the kind of dynamic approach to programs that uh, Sabal have uh, have definitely uh, embraced um, in this program and, and, and in others, I believe, and that not being afraid to make changes and to make improvements and to actually, you know, completely change things um, if need be. Um, based on evidence, based on the monitoring and evaluation that we saw before, and just making things better all the time, I think, is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this last thing, no, from what you've just mentioned, how much we've learned from each other. No, this idea that really collaboration is super important for improvement, for growth, for development, um, for bringing to the students the best we can by thinking together. Uh, special projects are really important for the program. So let me invite you all to watch this video on special projects. Seibal en inglés cuenta con una variedad de actividades basadas en proyectos con distintos objetivos, como promover el desarrollo de competencias comunicativas, el intercambio cultural y lograr un proceso de formación integral. Estas son algunas de las propuestas. Shakespeare Festival. A toast for Scotland. A toast for the King. A través de la adaptación e interpretación de obras de Shakespeare, el festival promueve el valor de aprender una lengua extranjera tanto desde lo comunicativo como desde lo cultural e intercultural. I am the ghost of the Olki. My brother Claudius is an assassin. La propuesta comenzó en 2018 en un grupo de escuelas de Maldonado y rápidamente se fue extendiendo, primero dentro del departamento y luego a nivel nacional. Y en 2023 tuvimos nuestra primera experiencia en educación media. Rural Schools Spring Festival. One action. Sideways to the new world. This is my ship. I love sailing around the world. Este festival de obras de teatro en video está dirigido a las escuelas rurales que participan en el programa Seibal en Inglés. La propuesta se realiza en conjunto entre estudiantes, el equipo docente a cargo, tanto presencial como remoto, y el equipo de mentoría, así como también con la colaboración de las familias y toda la comunidad del centro educativo. Little Bridge Olympic Games. A través de un emocionante reto de aprendizaje, esta convocatoria se propone potenciar la participación de los grupos de estudiantes en la plataforma. Zen Art Festival. Este festival tiene el objetivo de trabajar la lengua extranjera y las artes plásticas en escuelas especiales del Sistema Educativo de Educación Primaria que forman parte del programa Seibal en Inglés. El proyecto se lleva adelante en conjunto con artistas en el aula y las obras son presentadas en un museo virtual. Make It Happen Contest El concurso Make It Happen tiene como objetivo fomentar el cuidado de los dispositivos, promover el uso de las plataformas digitales de Ceibal y fortalecer el aprendizaje de inglés en grupos de cuarto, quinto y sexto de escuelas de contexto vulnerable. A su vez, capacita a maestros de aula y al equipo directivo para que el programa siga funcionando de manera autónoma luego de que finaliza la intervención. Minecraft Craftaways La propuesta de Minecraft Craftaways de Seibal en inglés ofrece a los estudiantes la posibilidad de ser gamers en un mundo especialmente diseñado con desafíos que deberán resolver utilizando sus conocimientos de inglés. 1930, The Comic Book. En 2022, se publicó el cómic Mystery of K. Cole, Along the River Banks, spin-off de la primera novela educativa transmedia Misterio de Cabo Frío. Y en 2023, lanzamos 1930, 
The Comic Book, spin-off de la novela transmedia 1930 El Viaje, que te invita a investigar y resolver desafíos dentro del universo de 1930. What's your name? Eh, Matthew. Oh, un aplauso para Matthew. A través de sus diferentes propuestas, Seibal en inglés contribuye a democratizar el acceso al aprendizaje de una lengua extranjera y promueve el desarrollo de competencias mediante el trabajo colaborativo. Conoce todas nuestras propuestas en nuestro sitio web. So, Gabriela, Ana, thank you very much for um, for participating in this discussion and for your very thoughtful uh, answers to the questions. Um, it just remains for me to say to everybody uh, listening out there, please um, download the report if you've liked what uh, you've heard today. Uh, there's a lot more that you can learn from downloading the report. And um, thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.